meeting is being recorded. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the first webinar of the IBM Digital Nation fourth webinar series. Today's topic is creating a smart home IoT application. Before we begin, I want to emphasize that if at any moment during, uh, during this webinar, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask uh, in the chat or Q&A module. Uh, you can uh, access the WebEx chat on the bottom uh, right uh, of the screen. All right. Today's webinar will be focused on the topic of Internet of Things and specifically the smart homes. I will start by introducing myself and the IBM Digital Nation platform. Then we will dive into the Internet of Things and its tools, specifically Node-RED, which is a visual programming tool, and IBM Watson IoT platform. Both of them are going to be accessed and enabled using IBM Cloud. After that, I will show you the demo and we will finally move on to questions and answers. Well, to introduce myself, my name is German Shane and I'm your presenter for today. I am a content and application developer for the IBM Digital Nation program. I oversee the development of new features on the website, and I also create courses for cloud, IoT, and container orchestration learning paths on this platform. In my spare time, I like to explore cities and take photos. Well, what is IBM Digital Nation? IBM Digital Nation is an educational and enablement platform that allows you to achieve four goals, that are such as learn, uh, since the platform offers you a wide range of courses and tools to help you learn the latest technology trends and uh, helps you explore new opportunities in the real world. You can also earn badges with our platform. IBM Digital Badges are a verified proof of your achievement. They are recognized, respected and valued in the IT industry. And you can also include them in your CV and share them on social media, which will give value to both your CV and your uh, social media profile. With our platform, you can innovate. Uh, the platform offers you inspiration and guides on how to build different uh, solutions. It provides the foundations of the design thinking process. And uh, you can also build innovative solutions using the free IBM Cloud Lite services. Finally, with IBM Digital Nation, you can find jobs. Uh, the platform offers you a job advisor tool, which is powered by uh, IBM Watson technology. It helps uh, you match your relevant skills to uh, any of the job offerings. And it also performs a skill gap analysis, which advises you on the available courses you need to take in order to bridge that gap. I will now switch to the browser to give you a short uh, demo of our platform.
All right. Um, also, if uh, the if you have some delay in seeing the screen, please notify us in the chat. Uh, I will try to slow down and try my best to accommodate uh, as many people as possible. Um, so right now you should be seeing uh, the landing page. Uh, on the landing page, you have uh, a top banner from which you can navigate to the entire website. Uh, you can also browse the journeys and explore the courses uh, from the from these two buttons. You can uh, watch an overview and tutorial video. Also, uh, you can see the goals, the philosophy of our platform, which I've described. Each of them uh, is actually a clickable button, which leads you to a relevant website section. And most importantly, um, on the landing page, you have the description of uh, the journeys of our platform. Explorer offers courses that introduce you to new emerging technologies and describe you how they're being used in the real world. Innovator focuses on the project-based and hands-on courses. You get to learn about the technology while at the same time applying it. And finally, New Color Journey offers courses oriented to, towards specific job roles, such as IoT developer, artificial intelligence analyst, etc. It also hosts a job advisor tool, which I've uh, described previously. Like I said before, it helps you search for jobs that best fit your skills and it performs a skill gap analysis. Also, um, in order to easily navigate through our platform, we uh, gathered all of our courses under the courses page. You can uh, access it through the top banner. You can either choose the topic or you can just click it and you will be taken to this page where all the courses that are hosted in our platform are displayed. You have a wide range of choices such as coding, web application, design thinking, cloud, AI, blockchain, IoT, etc. The list uh, always grows and we constantly update our content. And that is it for the demo of the platform. I will be switching back to the presentation. All right. The Internet of Things, or IoT, is a global system of interconnected physical devices and services that deliver data via the Internet. IoT devices often include sensors, microcontrollers, network devices, and even uh, complex uh, systems, computer, anything actually be, can be a part of IoT if it can uh, send uh, and receive data to a larger scale uh, network to achieve some goal. It all depends on the architecture and scale of the solution. These devices have been widely adopted across a range of industries, including healthcare, manufacturing, automotive industry, retail, building automation, just to name a few. One of the key components of Internet of Things is sensors. A sensor is a device that reacts to changes in its environment. Some of the examples of sensors include a temperature sensor, uh, a touch sensor, and move and movement sensor. Sensors can be both uh, real and simulated because at the end of the day, it's uh, what the output is uh, numerical data, and we can easily uh, we can easily simulate that if uh, we lack the actual hardware. And in fact, we will be utilizing simulated sensors in this webinar for the demonstration purposes. However, there is much more to IoT than sensors. It's an Internet of Things, not Internet of Sensors. So what are those things? Well, uh, those things can include things like microcontrollers, which, for example, often act as the central hub uh, for sensor data and they gather it and they process it. A camera can be uh, a sensor, especially if it's embedded, with, if, especially if it's connected to a uh, visual recognition, uh, if, if it uh, utilizes any visual recognition algorithms or is used in uh, detecting uh, special patterns, etc. A voice assistant is also a thing 
I've been watching services, even though they're not physical devices, uh, they are often a crucial uh, part in designing uh, complex intelligent systems that have impact on the real world. A thing can end up being anything, depending on the scale of the solution. In the next slides, I will cover several potential IoT applications. And well, those applications can uh, be a city infrastructure, smart and safe homes, healthcare, cars. For example, Tesla is a great example of uh, not just high tech, but uh, IoT in general, given how many uh, sensors and its general connectivity to everything around it. And uh, also environmental science, it's one of the uh, biggest IoT applications in order to combat the climate change. But also IoT projects can be as small as a smart shower, for example. For example, uh, the smart shower includes just can include only three components, a temperature sensor, humidity sensor and microcontroller. But it would be enough to already give you um, uh, a lot of information on uh, uh, in what environment uh, are you, uh, in what environment it's operating. On the other hand, uh, we have some, uh, large scale projects such as smart, uh, smart cities. Its components include large systems that talk to each other. Smart city would manage the power supply based on the data that comes from the, every establishment in the city. You can also concentrate on areas with higher, con with higher concentration of people and route additional uh, public transportation there. As you can see in this case, the components are larger and more complex, but they still talk to each other. Um, we, have, uh, a, we have one comment saying no sound is heard. Uh, I send the instructions. All right. So, uh, Wurud, the uh, my co-presenter, has sent uh, instructions on how to enable sound. If someone is having troubles, yes, please inform us. We will try our best to help you. Anyway, the core concept, the, despite the scale of the project, remains the same. It's the system. Uh, I. Internet of Things is a system of interrelated things that end up performing a designated function. And they do this through talking to each other and through getting data about the environment. In order to build the solution, we are going to utilize, uh, in order to build our solution, the Smart Home IoT app, we'll utilize a multi-purpose visual programming tool called Node-RED. Node-RED is a programming tool for wiring together hardware devices, APIs, and online services in innovative uh, ways. It's a visual editor where you can just drag and drop and connect things together. It's pretty simple. IBM Cloud allows the deployment of Node-RED as, it, uh, as its uh, publicly available instance. And therefore, it gives uh, it all access to the wide range of services available on the IBM Cloud platform. In the next slide, I will familiarize you with the Node-RED UI in order for you to understand better what is happening once we move into the demo. The outline is pretty simple. On the left side of the UI, you have uh, all the nodes which we can drag and drop uh, on the central panel where we where we actually create our IoT application. These nodes can uh, represent uh, programming functions, uh, web pages, and uh, uh, IBM Cloud services or sensors actually, be they real or simulated. In order to uh, integrate sensors, we will be utilizing an IBM Watson IoT platform, which we will describe uh, further down the way. But to wrap up the uh, demonstration of the flow editor, the central area is uh, where is the workspace. This is where we work on creating our flow. And on the right side, you can see the output and the debug information. 
and you can also uh, you can also manage uh, your application from there. Another component of our demo is an IBM Watson IoT platform. IBM Watson IoT platform is a managed cloud hosted service designed to make it simple to derive value from your IoT devices, specifically the data. Uh, it also supports additional services such as blockchain service and analytic service, which can further enhance your IoT applications. Uh, with its capabilities, you can enable uh, organizations to capture and explore data for devices, equipment, and machines. And you can discover insights that can drive better decision making, again, thanks to the analytic services. Today, we will be utilizing a simulated temperature sensor created with the help of IBM Watson IT platform. It also allows you to connect uh, real uh, sensors. And uh, the, uh, if you uh, if you go to the platform, it will uh, give you guides on how to do that. Uh, the application we're doing today is a smart home system that measures the house temperature, tracks if its residents are in the house, and assesses the security risk to the house based on the proximity sensor data and the number of people in the house. You can see all of this from this uh, block diagram that you should see on uh, your screen right now all the data will be and also we will use that data to generate notifications that you will be able to see in the dashboard which we will also create ultimately you're not uh, you're not restricted to create just this kind of application you can create any measurements you want connect any sensors you want or simulate them you can let your creativity fly this webinar demonstrates only one scenario and a simple one at that well, let's go over the high level steps. Um, we have uh, we have five level, uh, five uh, steps in this uh, uh, demo. We'll be deploying a Node-RED instance. We'll be connecting it to the IBM Watson IT platform. We will create simulated sensors. We'll create a Node-RED flow, and we will uh, run the application. I will now be switching to my web browser to show you the full steps. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to cloud.ibm.com and uh, enter your credentials. You will be taken to the IBM Cloud dashboard. From there, uh, you need to go to the catalog. This is where all the IBM Cloud uh, services and software are located. Once you open the catalog, uh, you will be taken to this page. Uh, it has two tabs, services and software. In this particular case, we're interested in the software tab. Click the software tab and select the web and application category. In that category, you should find a node red app. You need to you need to select it and you will be taken to this page. From this page, you will be given a general overview information. Um, you will you will need to you will need to select uh, a cloud and a database uh, as your service. However, given that it's a light plan, it's already it's the only one available and it's already pre-selected. So all you need to do is press create an app button at this stage. Once you press that button, you will be taken to this configuration page. Uh, all you need to do is uh, give your app uh, a name. You need to make sure that it's a unique name in order for it to be hosted. Uh, however, uh, if you don't want to bother, uh, it or uh, IBM Cloud uh, has already pre uh, generated a name for you, which we can use. And another thing is you need to select uh, a region. Uh, the IBM Cloud has a limited number of hosting regions, and um, 
you and the you need to uh, considering the most of you are from Africa, you will need to select the one that is geographically closest to Africa. So uh, probably uh, Frankfurt um, or London would be uh, your best bet. After this, you can safely create, you can safely press create button and you will be taken to this page. In this, uh, in this page, you can uh, manage uh, your node red uh, instance and uh, in order to actually access uh, the application from IBM Cloud, you need to press the deploy your app button. So let's press it together. Uh, in order to deploy your app, you need to generate an A IBM Cloud API key. It's uh, gonna it's gonna be unique in each case. So all you need to do is press the new button. Uh, by the way, again, if uh, if uh, there is a delay in the uh, screen share, please inform us. Anyway, uh, ju you just need to press OK. There is act there isn't much input that is needed from you. Um, you also have uh, control over how much uh, memory you can give uh, to your app. So, um, given that uh, given that uh, this uh, kind of application can be a bit memory intensive, um, and given that IBM Cloud Lite account has restrictions uh, on how much memory uh, you can allocate to your apps, suggest you pick the maximum 256 megabytes that is allocated to you and click the create button so this uh, step will take some time because uh, it will be creating uh, a continuous delivery it's going to create a pipeline which will uh, deploy the application to IBM cloud so right now it's uh, going through the entire process it shows you allocating uh, resources it's also going, going to show a small pop show uh, saying success once you have uh, this view, once you have the tool chain and delivery pipelines, everything showing up, uh, this is when uh, it's this is when it starts getting deployed. Um, generally, you need to see that you need to have your status uh, shown as deployed, uh, and that's going to take some time. We will not be going uh, through all of this because. Uh, uh, there are way more exciting things going ahead, uh, ahead of us. So instead, I will be switching uh, to another account where we have everything ready. So once this is all done, uh, you need to go back to the IBM Cloud dashboard like we have over here. Click View Resources, and you will be taken to the resource list. This is where you can see all of your um, applications and services. All right. So um, go to the uh, no. Uh, go to go under the cloud cloud foundry apps, and you will see your node red app over here. All of them will show up under the cloud foundry apps. So select it. And you will be taken uh, to this page. This is your node uh, red tool uh, deployed to IBM Cloud. This is where you can access it. And uh, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them now. All right. Okay. Uh, I will be proceeding then with the webinar, or you can uh, always type in the chat again, and uh, I will be monitoring and answering the questions. So, what do we do next? We, uh, you can see that our app is set to running. That means we can uh, click the visit app URL uh, link, and this is when you will be taken to the node red. Um, in general, when you launch Node-RED for the first time, it will offer you to set up the credentials 
uh, and provide username and password and to secure your editor if you wish to do so you can do that otherwise you'll be taken to, the, to this window and all you need to do is for us to go to your node red flow editor and this is the screen that you should be already uh, somewhat familiar with as i demonstrated it during the presentation um when you open the node red editor when you are in the node red flow you need to install some third party nodes in order to we have one question um from owen can you preview how you started until you uh, reach uh, at the node? Um, so do you mean all the steps on how to uh, enable the node, node red? Um, after, like after the demo, I can just uh, uh, go over it in high level. Uh, other, otherwise, uh, otherwise, we need to uh, rewatch the recording because uh, I, this will take a lot of time and we need to uh, go through the demonstration. Okay. But I will cover the high level steps uh, again, just in case. All right, so in order to create our uh, smart home IoT application, we need to install some uh, third party nodes for our uh, node red tool. To do that, uh, you need to click the menu at the top uh, right side of the screen going to have a drop down over here. Select the manage palette menu. All right. Go to install tab and you need to install two packages. Node red dashboard. So right now we have it is installed. I'm just showing you exactly how this code. Node red dashboard. And another one is node red contrib IoT oh, no IBM Watson IoT. Yes, that's that's the one. And again it is installed. So uh, once you install all of them, you can uh, start uh, creating you, you can start creating your flow. So in order to create our smart home IoT application, uh, we will need two, uh, we, will, we, need, we, need, we need to drag and drop several, uh, several, uh, several node types. And those include one inject node, five JavaScript function nodes, Oh, and by the way, if you can't find uh, the node by scrolling, does it, it, it's not a problem. You can always use the search function at the top. So let's drag and drop five function nodes. And again, this is useful. Right now I'm dragging and dropping this for the demonstration purpose. I've already pre-configured everything in order to save time. Um, you need to find, you need to, uh, you will need exactly one uh, Watson uh, IoT output node. Uh, keep in mind there are some nodes uh, of in, uh, there are some nodes that are both uh, of input and output type. So don't confuse the two. Uh, to create a, a local dashboard, we will need to uh, have three chart nodes. And finally, uh, we need one text node. With, with which we will show the notifications from our smart home. All right. So this is so this is how they look like in the original form. Uh, you don't need to scroll through anything. You just uh, need to type uh, out the exact names, and uh, you and uh, then you can drag them. You can drag them around. You can connect one to another by double clicking. You can uh, configure each node. All this is uh, all this is pretty simple and visual. The only thing is, um, you will need to have uh, some uh, very basic uh, coding skills. But uh, I will walk you even through that. Uh, in particular, we need the uh, JavaScript uh, coding skills. All right. So 
what why exactly do we need these nodes well uh, as you may remember from the presentation we are having uh, three sensors we have a temperature sensor uh, a sort of uh, people sensor the one that detects how many people are, are there in the house and we have a proximity sensor which detects uh, the proximity of uh, strangers to the house and uh, we will be using charts to illustrate that data and we'll be using a text node to uh, show the notifications based on that data an inject node shows uh, an inject node demons uh, generates the initial data so because we are using simulated sensors, not the real ones, uh, we need to uh, have something to start with. So um, this node uh, injects the data into the uh, into this in, into this flow. We are going to set our temperature to twenty two degrees Celsius, people uh, to zero, and the proximity um, and the proximity sensor value to hundred meters. And we're also uh, going to set the this uh, inject node to uh, inject data uh, every five seconds repeatedly. All right. Then we connect this inject node to the uh, to one JavaScript function node. This JavaScript function node is going to initialize the data, and that means it's going to uh, generate. Uh, the sensor data which is going to be displayed in the charts and which will also uh, send the data to the IBM Watson IoT platform. So if we double click on that initialized data, which is again connected to the inject node, um, we have uh, five lines of JavaScript node. Um, in the node red, the most important uh, programming object is called uh, msg.payload. It carries all of the data throughout all of the nodes. So in that msg.payload, we're going to uh, set up uh, four parameters, four variables. Temperature, which uh, using the random number generator uh, is going to be between the values of uh, 20 and 24 degrees Celsius. Then we're going to set up a variable called people, which again, using the random number generator, is going to be between uh, zero and uh, four people. So we're assuming that in total, there should be only four people in the house max. Proximity sensor is gonna be anywhere between 0 0.1 and 100 meters. And finally, we have a complicated equation uh, for calculating security risk based on the proximity of strangers and based on the number of people in the house. But the bottom line is the emptier the house and the closer the stranger is, the more security uh, risk there is. It's an, uh, it's an oversimplification, but for this demonstration purpose, that will do. So, right, what do we do with the rest of the nodes? Uh, well, we connect the rest of the uh, JavaScript nodes. So these four and the uh, Watson IoT output node to this initialized data uh, function node. In the top three JavaScript nodes, all we need to do is actually convert, uh, is actually convert the data a bit. We'll be uh, setting the msg.payload object, uh, we will we'll, so uh, we will extract the temperature data from the initialize uh, data function node and putting it into msg.payload object. And we will be feeding it uh, into the chart node. So that, so that way it's uh, gonna be able to read the data and display it, uh, uh, and display it on a graph. And that is uh, true for the uh, uh, temperature people and proximity sensors. Then the notification sensors, notifications function node, which is connected to the uh, text node, 
Uh, it's a bit different. We're not generating any graphical data. We are instead generating text, and this is a, and therefore it's going to be a, uh, a little bit different. So what exactly is this? Um, in this node, we have uh, an array with various notifications, which will be displayed in uh, cases when uh, everything is uh, normal with the house. So we'll have things like nothing to report, restocking fridge, power consumption switch to echo mode, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Normally, we would normally you, you need uh, you would need to connect uh, you would need to have other sensors to uh, back up to back up these claims. But right now, we just assume that uh, we can send this in case uh, everything is all right at the house. Um, since this notifications JavaScript node is connected directly to initialized data JavaScript node, um, we have access to all the sensor data that is being generated. We have a quick question. So do sensors in the hardware, like the hardware sensors, need to be node read compliant or you can connect to any sensor? Um, so that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, uh, the thing about this is that um, it doesn't matter. It, it's not about the compliance or anything. It's just um, about the data. So Node-RED uh, basically it just it's a programming tool. It uh, takes it just needs uh, it just needs to be able to uh, read the data. Now, when it comes to connecting uh, actual sensors to um, IBM, uh, when it comes to to connecting uh, them to Node-RED, this is when you will need to utilize uh, IBM Watson IT platform, and this is where you will need to use the input type of node. Um, however, for, for this, you need to create um, a separate simulation, or you need to have an actual physical device. Unfortunately, we can't include this in the scope of, of this uh, webinar, but in general, um, you have a sensor or you have a program that simulates it, uh, you can find uh, easily the tutorials with which you can uh, connect it to your Node-RED flow. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, this is going to be really amazing and you can uh, build some uh, cool stuff with it. For everyone who missed any of the steps or wants to follow up with what uh, German uh, start, how did he start from the first node and how he built the whole flow? I'll be sharing the recording of this webinar with you. So this session is being recorded and I'll be sending it to all of you after the webinar ends. So don't worry about that. Yeah, so uh, in general, uh, we always share our webinar recordings you don't need to worry if you uh, miss anything you can always catch up and you can always take the courses on our platform we have uh, similar courses that utilize the same tools you will you always uh, have something to uh, build up your knowledge anyway uh, like i said notifications javascript node has access to all the sensor data so I'm going to walk you through the code over here and explain what each uh, code block does. So, uh, for example, this uh, section that I'm highlighting, for those of you not familiar with uh, uh, programming, this is an if statement. It's a a condition that is executed uh, if, uh, a, if a certain criteria is met. In this particular case, uh, we extract the people sensor uh, value from the msg.payload object, which again, the most, this is the cornerstone uh, object of Node-RED. And if its value is equal to zero, then uh, we uh, this, then in the msg.payload, we're putting a value code nobody is home and it's getting sent to the notifications uh, text node. Uh, this code block, you can notice that it's called else if. So this, so if the first if condition was not satisfied, then we call the else if condition. 
and uh, it uh, again checks whether the criteria is met. In this case, if we have four people, then um, we send a notification, the whole family is at home. Then, um, if then we have a more complicated LCF condition. If we have a proximity sensor value uh, above or equal to 10, but uh, below or equal to 25, then we have, uh, then we display notification there is a stranger near the house. And the last LCF condition, if the security risk is above 50, so if there are other combined factors that uh, create a security risk of uh, above 50 percent, then we display uh, a notification. There is security risk of uh, X percent. So we extract that security risk over here and uh, we insert it into the notification. So this uh, message is actually dynamic. And finally, we have an else condition here. So if none of those are met, then uh, what we do is that inside the msg.payload, we put one of those various notifications, one of, one of them randomly. And in the end, uh, we return the whole, uh, we return the MSG object and uh, it's getting sent to the notifications uh, node. For those of you who said that they are uh, late or they missed something, again, we'll be sharing with you the recording of this uh, webinar uh, shortly uh, after it's over. You will get you will get a link and everything, so don't worry about it. All right. So those are so those are the JavaScript nodes. Um, when it comes to configuring the what's my what's an IT node, it's very simple to configure. All you need to do is actually to double click it. It will generate the uh, ID, um, and uh, the format is uh, you just it's going to be set to JSON. Everything is fine on that end. Now, let's see how let's uh, let's configure our. Um, dashboard so our dashboard is going to be where we're going to display all the uh data in the graphic uh, in the graphic format so charts notifications etc uh the dashboard is created in order dy order dynamically uh, whenever you put those charts and uh, text uh, notes so uh the way i designed uh, the way i designed those charts is um I set them to show the data only for the past minute because we are sending uh, because we are injecting uh, new data every five seconds in the inject node, as described before. So, we, in order not, in order to, in order for it not to be too cluttered and in order to actually distinguish individual data to points, we uh, limited the. Uh, uh, X axis to only one minute, so you can actually distinguish what data is being shown. Obviously, this is uh, a line chart. Oh, and by the way, um, each node that you have, uh, you can give it an individual name to better distinguish it because it's all graphic, but still, if you have, uh, for example, five JavaScript nodes or 15 JavaScript nodes, it's going to be very hard to uh, understand what, uh, what is what. Also, in order to um, uh, create your dashboard, you need to set a group over here. And to do that, you need to, uh, near, near the group dropdown, you need to click the pencil icon. Uh, you give uh, your group a name, and then you give a, and you, then you create a tab name. So I set them both to smart home because we're not really distinguishing between uh, we're not we don't need to distinguish uh, anything over here it's a very simple dashboard so we set the group we uh, we click update and it's done uh, notifications is even simpler to set up you select the same group for uh, as as the charts and uh, yeah in the and uh, you can pick up uh, the layout so 
uh, how will your notifications uh, be displayed. So, uh, for example, I picked uh, I picked this layout. So the label notifications is going to show at the uh, top, and the value of notifications, which uh, is those notifications we have pro programmed, those messages we programmed in the notifications JavaScript node, they will show up at the bottom. Awesome, great. We have everything configured. Now is the time to see uh, the results of our labor. And to do that, we need to click the deploy button. Perfect. So when it shows successfully deployed, that means there are no errors or seemingly no errors, at least in terms of coding perspective. Maybe you programmed it, uh, maybe you uh, programmed it in one way, but it turned out to be in another. That's something that uh, you can uh, fix anyway, so that that's not a problem. Um, on the right side of the screen, as we talked before, uh, there is the output uh, information. You need to go to the dashboard tab, which is the first tab displayed by default, and you go to the layout tab within it. You can see uh, all those groups you created. And you can see temperature, number of people, proximity, and notifications being uh, displayed all under this group. And also, uh, just to confirm that uh, all of this uh, is actually working, uh, when I highlight uh, one of the when I highlight one of these uh, items, the appropriate uh, node. Uh, is being highlighted in node red with uh, with a dotted line over here. Perfect. What we need to do now is to press this button, and it's going to show you. It's going to show you the dash uh, your dashboard, your dynamic your dynamic data. So, your temperature for the past minute, the number of people in the house for the past minute. We just assume that this is the house. So where people uh, live and go uh, often uh, the proximity the proximity sensor is also being shown and you can highlight the individual data points to see the precise value if y axis is not good enough and uh, on the bottom we have the notifications which again uh, uh, which again work according to the JavaScript uh, we have defined. So, for example, cooking biryani is uh, a notification which shows up when everything is normal. Again, power consumption switch to account mode when everything is normal. Now, let's wait for it to show uh, a notification that is related directly to the sensor data. Yes, nobody is at home. And at this point, the number of people sensor is at zero. Well, this is all, uh, all of this is fine, but this data right now that you're seeing, all of this, it all exists within the scope of uh, your Node-RED application. You can't really uh, use it, you can't really export it. However, uh, with the IBM Watson IT platform, you can. If we go back to our Node-RED flow, you remember that we uh, drag and drop a Watson IoT node, and we configured it by double clicking on it. Well, if you go to its configuration near the quick start ID, you can see this icon. And this icon can actually, or what this icon does when you press it for the first time is that it registers uh, your, uh, your um, node red flow all the data that you're creating, it uh, registers it on IBM Watson IoT platform, and uh, it assigns it uh, a device ID, which you can observe here. You have an individual link, and you have the same data displayed over here, but with the exception that you can uh, actually go through the steps uh, that are displayed on the right here. You can see click here for more details, and you can see uh, all those. Uh, uh, you can see all those steps to uh, enable uh, to uh, expose your uh, Internet of Things uh, application to the world and uh, use that data in uh, other applications. 
So, so all of this you can uh, either you can either feed it to your uh, Node your Node.js application, or you uh, or you can do, uh, other <coughs> IBM Cloud services. At this point, everything uh, ev everything is uh, in your hands. So you need to do is uh, follow the tutorials here, uh, get the knowledge, and get the clear idea of what you want to achieve. And everything everything else everything else is possible. It's just a matter of uh, getting the right to getting the right tools. And this concludes my demo. Um, Internet of Things learning path of the IBM Digital uh, of IBM uh, uh, platform consists of nine courses. Uh, we have an explorer course which has a very high level overview and use cases of Internet of Things. We also have four innovative courses that teach the users to work with Node-RED and IBM Watson IoT platform. And they also utilize uh, other IBM Watson services and other simulated sensors. Uh, we also have four new color courses, which incorporate topics such as networking, APIs, analytics into Node-RED and IBM Watson IoT platform. All of these courses are short to the point and each of them uh, grants you a badge. This concludes our webinar. If you have any questions, please ask them uh, now or while uh, I demonstrate the last two slides. Again, we're monitoring the chat uh, for any questions uh, you may have. Thank you, German. All right, so uh, again, you still have a couple of minutes. Um, so these are the references in the next steps, which you can go to. You can access more courses on the Internet of Things topic and different emerging technologies on IBM Digital platform, and you can earn badges. Uh, you can to navigate uh, to this link shown on the screen, and you can access all Internet of Things related courses available on the platform. Um, we have also uh, the IBM Developer Advocates uh, groups and you can check if you have uh, one in your city or around the world by clicking the this link developer.com slash cities and finally you can join our facebook group for other events all right so we have some questions over here i will address them in order so uh uh, so, uh, uh, Prince Will asks uh, to uh, share the links. I think I think Ruth, uh, I think the they're, they're asking about the links, links on the okay, presentation. Uh, Ruth will share the links now on the chat. So we have uh, we had uh, another question. Uh, okay, we have a question from Albert. What uh, level of coding skills do I need? Mm, well, um, you need to um, you need to have some knowledge of JavaScript um, to create Node-RED uh, applications. It's not really it's not really complex knowledge. It's just uh, you need to understand the JSON data structure and understand some uh, really basic uh, JavaScript operations. So the good thing is. Uh, JavaScript is one of the easiest languages to learn, and it's very uh, versatile in its applications. And um, again, um, if you are familiar with our platform, uh, we have a course on JavaScript. If you take it, uh, you'll be good to go. And even then, you and even then, uh, uh, if you take uh, the IoT courses we have, um, we uh, always uh, give you the code that you need to insert. If you study it, if you uh, play around with it, you can uh, understand it as well. So it's not really an issue. Uh, Ruth has just uh, shared the links with you. So um, 
Again, this is your last chance to uh, ask the uh, to ask any questions. But in general, thank you for attending this webinar. You can contact me via my email shown on this slide. I will also share with it with you on the chat right now. And our team is looking forward to seeing you again in the future events. Thank you. Okay, thank you, German. Uh, for the new joiners that we have uh, on this webinar series, so, and if uh, you are not familiar with uh, our uh, strategy on each webinar, so we basically record each and every session and we make it available after the webinars. Uh, so, like, except, uh, expect to. Um, uh, to send you the webinar, uh, to the recording and the presentation in maximum two days. I'll make sure that you all have it. And if you have any questions or queries, just please send it to German. I, I have also uh, sent an, a link to uh, put on your uh, ideas and your thoughts on this webinar. So that would help us uh, even uh, create uh, better webinars based on your feedback. So we would appreciate if you can uh, put your ideas and thoughts there. And we'll meet you next week at the same time with a new topic on blockchain. So I'll meet you then. And uh, thank you. Enjoy your weekends. And see you soon. Thanks, everyone.